So Michigan hired Sharon Moore to be their head coach. It's not an outrageous hire by any stretch of the imagination. He's already on staff. They prioritized wanting to keep staff continuity, players in the program, coaches, strength coaches, et cetera, inside the program. That's what they wanted. They wanted those players and those people to stay at Michigan. You don't want to be a story in the college football world like Alabama was where your roster is decimated by dudes leaving for the transfer portal after Nick Saban retires because you hire Kalen DeBoer. Didn't want that problem. So they keep it in-house. It was seemed to, and appears to be a pretty popular choice for the players at Michigan, former players, players that played under Sharon Moore. By all intents and purposes, it makes a ton of sense. And you see quickly, and, and I think I'm in this camp already of like, okay, so who is Michigan going to hire as their head coach in 2028? I just don't, I don't know that Sharon Moore, I don't know that I have a great feel that he keeps that program at the level that they have now become accustomed to winning national championships. Is he a national championship winning head coach? I don't know. I don't know that I get that feeling from him. And, and I don't, I guess really, I don't have a ton to base that off of other than, you know, kind of crying after a game, <laughs> telling Jim Harbaugh how much he loves him. Uh, when when the guy's not dead, still alive, but it's a big time job for your first job. And when you get jobs like that, there is a certain certain feeling in fan bases that like Michigan fans, I think, are still pretty excited about Sharon Moore being their head coach. Which I guess more power to you um, if they, if you feel stronger that that guy is going to lead you to the promised land, then like kudos to you. I don't know that I would share that <laughs> feeling that Sharon Moore is going to lead us to the promised land, but if that's how Michigan fans feel, then who am I to judge? But I think the immediate thought is that this generally doesn't go well, that going from an established head coach and whether that person left, resigned, fired, quit, retired, died, whatever, the, the successor generally does not do well in those situations. So I wondered, what does that look like? How often has this happened? So I went back um, to roughly 2000. There's one beforehand that I'll use before 2000. But how often does this happen? I, I, I counted, and I'm basically I, I cut it off at like the 2019 I think coaching carousel, coaching carousel, because I thought anything newer than that might not necessarily be a fair evaluation of whether something was a failure or a success with except for one situation. So it, it had roughly it was roughly like 30 to 35 times over the course of the last 25 years or so that and I, I ended up just for this purpose for the most part, keeping it at power five jobs. Now, there were some situations where like Greg Brandon followed Urban Meyer as the head coach at Bowling Green, right? Didn't go well. Uh, Greg McMacken followed June Jones as the head coach at Hawaii. Did not go well. So there are a couple of instances, but for the most part, I left this as just power five jobs. And so roughly 30 times. And it, it's not as bad as you think. It's not great. So here are my list of like guys who were coordinators and then became head coaches directly, like moved from a coordinator job or a position coach job to the head coach of that program and whether or not they were a success. I have Frank Solis. So Tom Osborne retired in 1997. He was replaced, replaced by Frank Solis. Frank Solis was eventually fired. And I think if you were to look back on it now, and I, I would imagine that Nebraska fans feel this way. I can't speak for them. But if you were to look back on it now, Frank Solich got a raw deal at Nebraska. So I put Frank Solich as a success because you know what? Frank Solich led Nebraska to a national championship game four years after Tom Osborne retired. That feels like a pretty, he coached a Heisman trophy winner four years after Tom Osborne retired. To me, that feels like a success. 
even though he eventually got fired. And I think part of that has to do with like a, he get a, he got a DUI, which it's widely believed that he was roofied. I, I don't know that Frank Solich necessarily is viewed as he should be viewed as a failure. I think at the time he was, but coaching a national championship game four years after your predecessor left, I think now th that could come around to bite me later, later in this same show. But I think I have, I think it's 11, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are 11 successes here. When Les Miles left Oklahoma State to Mike Gundy, success. Gary Croton left when Bronco Mendenhall takes over at BYU, success. Kyle Whittingham has been an absolute home run smash at Utah, replacing Urban Meyer. Chris Peterson took Boise State to new heights after replacing Dan Hawkins. Brett Bielema won a Big Ten championship after replacing Barry Alvarez. Dabo Sweeney has won several national championships after replacing Tommy Bowden. Chip Kelly coached the national championship game after replacing Mike Bellotti. Jimbo Fisher won a national title after replacing Bobby Bowden. David Shaw did extremely good things at Stanford. Ryan Day, I think, has done a nice job replacing Urban Meyer. You've coached in the playoff a couple of different times, coached in the national championship game, has Big Ten championships. Those are obviously successes. And so I think that flies in the face of the idea that being a coordinator, then being elevated to the head coaching job immediately makes you like, okay, this isn't going to go well. But when you look at this list, like Dabo Sweeney and Jimbo Fisher won national championships in the situation that we're talking about Sharon Moore being in. Jim, uh, Ryan Day, Chip Kelly, have, and my, Frank Solich coached in the national championship game after replacing some of these legends at their schools. Chris Peterson made the college football playoff. Mike Gundy probably should have made the BCS national championship game in 2011. David Shaw coached Stanford in several New Year's Six Bowl games. Kyle Whittingham, the same thing at Utah. So it's not 100% failure that just because Michigan hired an offensive coordinator to step into this role means that it's a slam dunk 100% that Sharon Moore is not going to be the head coach in the next four years or whatever. Now, do I think that? Yeah, because I just think when you – reach the heights that Michigan has reached in the last couple of years. I don't know that Sharon Moore sustains that. I don't know that he commands the same assistance that Jim Harbaugh would command because you go to Michigan to work under Jim Harbaugh under the guise of, I'm going to work for Jim Harbaugh. I'm going to have that on my resume. I'm going to have a powerful backer in my corner for the rest of my coaching career if I go there and do a really good job. Sharon Moore's not going to have that. You're not going to get that same cachet with a first-year head coach until, unless he reaches similar success that Jim Harbaugh does, he's just not going to have that same amount of pull. He's not going to have that same amount of pull with recruits. He's not going to have that same amount of pull with, with boosters, with assistants, with the school administration. It's just a different game when you're doing this for the first time. So I don't I don't know that I find it to be a smashing success in the future, but it's not it's not unprecedented, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Because when you look at the list of the eleven guys that I list here as successes, and you could argue that Frank Solich was not a success at Nebraska, I would argue against that. Um, I imagine you could probably argue that Brett Bielema, I, I, Brett Bielema is. I think somewhat self-inflicted at Wisconsin where he left for Arkansas and thinking that it's going to be easier to win a national championship at Arkansas than it would be at Wisconsin. Nonetheless, I think that's a list of 11 dudes and 11 schools who got it right by promoting guys to their head coaching jobs. And it went well. Now on the flip side, when I tell you that, there's roughly 30 instances where this has happened and we view 11 of them as successes. And you could argue one of them is not a success because he ultimately got fired. I mean, when you run down this list of like Frank Solich got fired, Mike Gundy's still there. Bronco Mendenhall left there. Um, 
on a quasi. Well, he left there for Virginia before quasi retiring. Kyle Whittingham still at Utah. Chris Peterson retired. Brett Bielema left for a dumb job. Dabo Sweeney still there. Chip Kelly left for the NFL. Jimbo Fisher left for a big payday. David Shaw left, uh, I guess, when things got somewhat bad at the end of his tenure. But you know what? There are still NFL teams that interview David Shaw for head coaching jobs. Ryan Day is still there. So I think you can argue for the most part that those are 11 good successes. And if Frank Solich got fired, I imagine if Nebraska could go back and do it again, especially after they viewed the past 20 years after they fired Frank Solich, they'd probably keep Frank Solich. But at that time, I think that's sort of the like, that might be the like biggest, the closest one there to what like Sharon Moore is going to go to right now is that expectations are super high at Michigan. And when you look at the failures, there are some crashes and burns. Now I I think I might be a hypocrite here when I say that Frank Solich is a success and Larry Coker is a failure. It probably is. Now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, it probably is hypocritical. Larry Coker won a national title coached in another one after Butch Davis had left Miami. But Larry Coker torpedoed the Miami brand, the program, and it just kept going down under Randy Shannon, also on the list. Uh, And it kept going down under uh, Al Golden, and it just kept, kept going down and down and down and down and down. And that started with Larry Coker. Now, Larry Coker didn't have the, like Frank Solich, like I said, was four years after Tom Osborne resigned. Larry Coker was like three years after, two years after Butch Davis left for the NFL. And then by four years after Butch Davis had left for the NFL, it was clear Larry Coker was sending that thing down the crapper. But Hal Mummy to Guy Morris, Kentucky, failure. Rick Neuheisel, Keith Gilbertson at Washington, failure. Rich Rod to Bill Stewart at West Virginia, fail. Joe Tiller to Danny Hope at Purdue, epic fail. Craig Schiano to Kyle Flood, failure. Chip Kelly to Mark Helfrich, epic failure. Where Chip Kelly had Oregon to where Oregon is once again, pales in comparison to where it was under Mark Helfrich. But again, Mark Helfrich coached in a national championship game. <laughs> like Mark Helfrich coached coached Heisman Trophy winners. And yet, I still think, I don't think you'd find anybody that would tell you that was a successful tenure at Oregon. Jerry Kill to Tracy Clays at Minnesota. Failure. Gary Pinkle to Barry Odom. Failure. Tom Herman to Major Applewhite. Failure. Hugh Freeze to Matt Luke. Epic failure. Chris Peterson to Jimmy Lake. Lake. Epic failure. Chad Morris to Sam Pittman, I think you could, I think Sam Pittman is on the hot seat. And I don't know that that's any easy, as easy of a job as some people think it is at Arkansas, but I don't, I don't know that you could label it anything other than a failure. Mike Leach to Zach Arnett, I, I mentioned earlier, I cut it off pretty much at like the 2019 coaching hire, t- tenure because I thought it might be unfair to label them failures. Like you've already gotten fired after after less than a year as the head coach. I think it's fair and clear to say that at that point, it's a failure. And this is just a, a kind of small smattering of the list when you look at some of the ones I took off there where, you know, Brady Hoke left Ball State when he had them 12-0 and 0 or 12-1 and 1 or whatever and left it to Stan Parrish who torpedoed the program. Or Urban Meyer to Greg Brandon at Bowling Green torpedoed the program. Greg McMacken at Hawaii after June Jones had him in playing in the Sugar Bowl, torpedoed it. There was a long, long, long list of guys who got who went from position coach or coordinator to head coach, and it did not work out. Now I'm not making a definitive statement one way or another, saying that it is you are destined for failure or you're destined for success. It's obviously an individual by individual basis. There are some programs where it's just easier to win. That when you look at the failures, okay, Miami at that time was viewed as a pretty easy job to win. Kentucky, bad place, tough place to win. Washington, pretty good place to win. West Virginia, pretty good place to win. Purdue, Rutgers, Minnesota, Missouri, Houston, Ole Miss, 
Arkansas, Mississippi State, those aren't necessarily great places to win. It's not an indication on your coaching acumen. If you don't win at places, you're not expected to win. But when you look at the list of Miami, Washington, West Virginia, some of these places are expected like you can win there. People have won there. You should win there. And these guys did not win there. And so I think it's more of a case-by-case basis. When you look at the successes, Nebraska, Oklahoma State, BYU, Utah, Boise State, Wisconsin, Clemson, Oregon, Florida State, Stanford, Ohio State, some of them are places that it's perceived as easy to win. Ohio State, Florida State, Nebraska. And other ones, it's impressive that what Chris Peterson did at Boise State, impressive. Bronco men and all did at BYU. Impressive. So I, I I don't know that it's fair, and I realize that that might be a ridiculous thing to say after spending the last 15 minutes telling you that I don't think Sharon Moore is a slam dunk success in the way in in waiting at Michigan. But I don't think it's fair to just immediately say this is not going to go well because there is a history of it going well or at least going well for a little bit before the wheels fall off. So I don't think the perception that being an offensive coordinator, taking over a power five program, especially one that just won the national championship is going to immediately lead to the wheels falling off. That's generally not a first year thing. It's generally a year three, four, five, even six or seven into the tenure when the wheels fall off. So sometimes it's a matter of when, not if. And other times it's a matter of if, not when. And I'll be interested to see where we find out where Sharon Moore fits in the success or the failure category in the next four years or so. My gut tells me Michigan's looking for a new head coach in the 2028 season. But I could be dead wrong. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you're watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all that great college football content that we're pumping out here on Saturday Glory. If you are listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. Be back at it. Same bad time, same bad channel tomorrow right here on the Daily Huddle with Saturday Glory.